Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Amanda Heisman, intuitive nutrition and energy coach. I help female entrepreneurs eat for energy so they can use that energy to bring forth their purpose and their passion into the world and not waste it on digestion and not feeling well. <laughs> And I am joined today by one Ms. Sarah Ann Negus, Modern Day Shaman. Thank you for joining me, Sarah. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to do this. It's the first time I've been on a joint live. So come on. I know. It's exciting. This is a first for Expand Your Energy, Expand Your Impact. See, we are forward thinking. We are forward thinking. <laughs> <We're> innovators. <laughs> awesome. And we got past our technical issues and we are. <laughs> we did. <laughs> um, so for those that might not know you Sarah why don't you just tell us a little bit about you okay this is for um, particularly the new people on the group as well um, I am a spiritual mentor the modern day shaman if you like um, and my work is about finding your own superpower that uh, potential that's within you now um, shamanic work looks into the darkness i see things that other people don't really notice and don't really see and in order to go backwards sorry forwards i believe you have to go backwards and look at where you've been so there's a little synopsis there awesome I hope that makes sense awesome makes little, sense. Uh, <laughs> and I've experienced Sarah's work. It's very powerful. It's very moving. So definitely, uh, you know, do a connection call with her if she's new to you. Um, but yeah. today we're, we're here to talk about your experience in the detox spring cleansing program that I ran earlier this month. Um, so what drew you to the experience in the first place, Sarah? Um, well, it was spring. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, bikini body, firstly. <laughs> the other thing is that we've known each other for a little while now, and I have wanted to um, experience what you do. I mean, we've talked about what you do, and it's, it's, I get it, but to actually really experience how it works for my body. We've, we've touched on a few things. You've done a, a profile, a personal profile for me in terms of um, things that are really good for my body and nourish me mm -hmm. and that was what really very helpful for me um, and I wanted to take it on to a next level now detoxing is something that I do with people's energy mm -hmm. and I wanted to experience that in my physical and see how the two things came together so I had a kind of a, a I had an inquiring mind Mm -hmm. um, but I also was doing it for myself, my own self, in my inside good, mm -hmm. and for my body. Okay, great. And so tell us about your detox experience. How? What were your impressions, or how did it match up to your expectations? Uh, well, the first expectation I had was that it would be difficult mm -hmm. for me. It wasn't mm -hmm. at all. Mainly because you did such a wonderful job in uh, giving me a shopping list, recipes, what to expect. The, every day we were on the detox, Amanda came on and did a live and it was so informative. Um, she talked not only about the process of detoxing and what the different uh, and things that were, um, we, were take, we were eating were doing for us, but she went in depth into the emotional content of the different organs within our body which just oh it's just sings to me it makes perfect sense and the things came together and i had a really wonderful experience the whole way through it i did the 10 days <laughs> I, you know i go in full <laughs> yeah awesome <laughs> you really go all in so let me back up um you touched on the organs and we'll talk about that but let me back up and just okay because you're you're talking about the 10 day i didn't really uh, say a little bit about the cleanse. Um, so there is a, the cleanse itself, you know, I've done a few videos on this and kind of, um, being, being a very holistic minded health coach. Um, I kind of get a pet peeve around when things are, um, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, like a lot of marketing around words like detox or cleanse, and they kind of lose their meaning after a while. Um, 
And what, you know, this wasn't like a fast, this wasn't a get fit no. quick thing or, a, you know, lose weight quick thing. Um, the cleanse was really um, a concentrated period of time to release that which no longer serves us and to do that through foods and juices and smoothies and teas and different concoctions that we put together. Um, yeah. And it was three days of concentrated time in which we did, you know, liquids, basically smoothies, juices, teas, things like that. Um, but the 10 day includes the two, two prep days and the three day cleanse itself. And then five days more of integration and a really systematic way to add things back in. Yeah. Uh, so that's a little bit about that. There was an option for the three day or the 10 day. And the three day is actually five days of support because they did the two days of prep with us and then the three day cleanse. Um, and it is really set up to delve into the emotional side as well that inevitably comes when you cleanse your body physically. Um, and I, I think some of the, um, some of the, the, the immediate feedback while we were still in the cleanse <laughs> was, Oh my goodness, I've done a cleanse before, but this feels different. Um, yeah. You know, I, you should have a disclaimer. This is not like any cleanse you have done before, you know. So um, how for, for you, Sarah, how was it different um, than any cleanse you or have you done a cleanse before? And if so, was it different or what surprised you going through it? You said I have, expectations I have, were really hard yeah. here. Yeah, I, I have done a cleanse before. My own spiritual teacher runs a um, that I used to work with. She runs a detox center in in the UK here, okay. um, and and so she offers detoxes with spiritual support. Which is, and I was surprised because you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You you held us while our bodies let go, and the emotions came up from us and the energy that was surrounding the whole of us from you was heart energy was heartfelt and non-judgmental and basically a processing energy so um i was not expecting that i thought that i was just going to have a few green smoothies and stuff like that so it was a it was a wonderful surprise not really i actually went down into it properly i i would have understood what i was doing but i it on a whim sure you know i did it quick which is how i go um so it was it was it, it the difference for me than than just getting a detox tea or something you know you can get these detox plans can't you from health food shops and things is that it wasn't just a physical one it was a mind body soul detox Mm -hmm. So not only did your body cleanse, so did your mind, and so did your emotions. Emotions. Absolutely, yeah, and that was the intention. So <laughs> it was good, strong one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, another thing you touched on is that we make all of our own um, drinks while we're yeah. while we're doing it. You know, it's not we don't buy some concoction. Um, not that there's necessarily anything wrong with that, but it also adds another element in that you have that factor of you're putting your own energy and love into the, the food and the drink that you're making. So, yeah. Um, so you, you touched on the organs. Like we talked a lot about release and letting go um, and which organs like tend to hold which emotion of the grief cycle. Um, but how do you see, sorry for the truck, <laughs> uh, um, detox like this benefiting those dealing with trauma or grief? Okay, so grief cycle is a, a complex one and it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I see it when I work with people um, and it's something that you touched on as well in, in one of your lives is that we often forget to grieve for the person that we were. Yeah. You know, every day we become our future self. Every time we shift up or change something or choose a new way, we, we step into more of our potential. 
yet letting go of who we were can be very difficult. This detox allows that, supports you through it, um, particularly because it clears, really does clear through the, the, the small intestine and the, the large intestine, which is my understanding when I look at energy is where we hold the, the past of us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, the, the colon in specific, the, the large intestine is really associated with um, the type of grief related to transformation. You know, okay. To our own evolution. So, so, you know, this was primarily a colon cleanse and, you know, we actually had a little ceremony to celebrate our former selves, to celebrate, you know, how she took us thus far and, um, and, you know, now it was time to kind of say goodbye and, and, and move on. Um, but we also focused, you know, we fo focused primarily on the colon, but we focused on the liver, um, mm -hmm. which holds anger a lot, the kidneys, the spleen, you know, sadness and worry and overthinking and things like that, which I think are all common things um, that people deal with when they're going through grief, transformation, growth, things like that, letting go of trauma. Yeah. So um, something else we did in the cleanse was we played with our beliefs around nourishment and food and, you know, what you know, something we tried to do at least was replace judgment with curiosity and kind of unpack and take off our beliefs about, um, you know, undress our beliefs at the door, so to speak, leave them at the door. Um, so, and just build more practice um, around conscious and intuitive eating, um, you know, as a practice. What did you think about that? And how did that resonate with you? What did, what did you feel? Um, I do tend to intuitively eat anyway, yeah. um, but I do have family members in particular around me that don't. They eat because they're looking for their edges, if you like. They're looking to feel themselves more fully. Mm -hmm. They, they, uh, my sister um, in particular, um, when she's full of mind chatter, when she's stressed out, she will eat and that's her comfort she mm -hmm. comforts herself through eating i think you call it hangry don't you yeah <laughs> i love that i told her the other day rach you're hangry and she cracked up it was really good yeah and i and, and the phrase here at least in the u.s it? okay so well i haven't heard it before um but she really understood what i was talking about because you know i can talk a good talk I'd get really scientific about it and all highbrow. And I just said the word hangry to her and, and she understood what I meant. Yeah. Um, and I think that that in, in the detox that came through a lot, wasn't it? Is that uh, there was a lot of beliefs out there around certain foods will nourish me, certain foods make me feel good. Whereas actually they're the ones that don't. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. And, you know, like it's called comfort food for a reason. We have these associations often from when we were really young um, that we associate with love or comfort in all in a donut, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, coming from a former sugar addict. Yeah, definitely. I mean, or we're using it to numb out in some way, just like any, yeah. any other vice. Yeah. yeah. We re reward our kids with sweets, don't we? We do. Oh. <laughs> It's programmed from an early age. Yeah. I can remember sneaking into my grandpa's. Um, we had a period of like three months with my grandpa while we bought our house when we moved from Columbus to Toledo, Ohio. And I can remember sneaking into his um, bedroom. I was really young and my little sis, my second sister was just born. And uh, he would give me nutter butters and, you know, like little Debbie snacks and like the worst things for you. But I can remember that was like grandpa time. My mom hated yeah. it. <laughs> I, I bet. I bet you would come out like that. Oh, just true. Especially because it was like right before bedtime too, right? <laughs> and he just, you know, he's just showing me some love. <laughs> Giving you some sweets. Right. Uh, um, so we've talked a little bit about like, how we view 
the role of food for the energy worker. Um, mm, we have, yeah. Yeah, a, a, a lot of times, um, at least a lot of a lot of the women in the cleanse are energy workers, right? And they've expressed that that they've been over, they've been able to show up more powerfully in their work after um, after this cleanse. So, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, when we work with energy, we have slightly different needs than than other uh, people that don't use the spiritual realms to help their clients if um when we travel when we expand when we use meditation or channel energy mm -hmm. our blood does drop quite considerably um and our blood sugar blood sugar yeah and it's very easy and i see it often to reach for sugar or caffeine with which to ground yourself back in your body it lowers the vibration those two things lower the vibration and bring you right back in easily yeah. the other thing that happens is that unless you're very good at managing your own energy as a as a um space holder mm -hmm. um you can catch other people's energetic stuff and it then creates a kind of um, a fluidy feeling in your body you can get bloated in your tummy can hold your own hold your own food and the detox teaches not only how to eat really good sugars well with balance mm -hmm. but it also helps push through what i call the the, the stale energy right and there's somebody at my door okay excuse me a minute while i have a walk yeah. time out time out <laughs> 